I'm one of those pesky white guys in STEM. <laughs> you are, yeah. Pesky. But I must say that, um, can I get the clicker off you? Yeah, and I'm going to get put up here. Um, I'm honestly here, I can say hand on heart because I've worked for and with women that have championed me, mentored me, coached me, and helped me get to this position. So it's something that I'm very passionate about. And it really pisses me off that there aren't more women in our STEM subjects because there's no reason that any woman couldn't do at least as good what I do or even better. So there's something seriously dysfunctional in the world that we have to fix. I don't quite know how that equation fails to equalize out, but we'll have to keep on working at it. So I'm going to be at Inspire Fest in July. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm mainly there talking about experiments in arts and technology. This is something that we're very passionate about in Bell Labs. And we're going to do some very interesting first in the world type collaborations with artists and things like that. So it's going to be good fun. But I was asked here to talk about some of the work we have in the area of augmented intelligence. So in Bell Labs, it's our role. We're the research arm of Nokia, and it's our role to try and solve the greatest human need challenges. And there are many of them for sure, but one of the ones in this particular topic we're addressing is the area of creating a thinking tool. So how can we as human beings be a thousand times better at thinking, be a thousand times more creative? How can we think about using augmented intelligence in that framework? So this is kind of one of the areas that I'm gonna talk about tonight. So if you think about it from a human evolution point of view, from a technology point of view, we've done all this great work developing these physical aids, um, like we have the wheel, back way back when that allowed us to travel 100 times farther compared to on foot. We have the printing press that allowed us to disseminate information thousands of times more quickly. We have um, you know, high resolution imagery that allowed us to see at the highest resolution into our brain and beyond. And of course, in recent times, we have um, space exploration where we've increased that ability to travel by factors of billions in just a very short period of time. But if you think about it, what have we done to develop a thinking tool from a human point of view? So this is just a bit of fun. We'll do it very quickly. Can anyone name what's the most common and most mature thinking tool that we all use today? Anyone? I'll buy a drink to anyone that gets this <laughs> in the next five seconds. Anyone brave enough to try out thinking tool that we use? Yeah. Cell phone, abacus, calculator. So it's really pen and paper. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And if you think about it, all those other things you said are not thinking tools, they're either like Google's a memory recall and Facebook is a waste of time <laughs> and so on, but really have a pen and paper and a, a computer is a logical extension of that. So what we feel is very important in Bell Labs is we feel we owe the world a thinking tool that will be a thousand times more efficient, allow you to th think a thousand times more quickly and allow you to be a thousand times more creative. And these are the kind of the big goals we go after in, in Bell Labs and that's our job to do that within Nokia. So how do you actually develop a thinking tool with augmented intelligence that might allow you to achieve these big goals? So of course we have this concept of big data and we're all kind of drowning in the sea of big data on a daily basis. Um, but what, how do you get beyond that? So you have to look to small data, but small data is just data. So what can you do with that data that's actually of value, that's of human value? So you need to be able to look to the small data and dig insights uh, from that small data. So there's a number of key elements when you think about building a thinking assistant tool through augmented intelligence. And one of them is how your brain works and how your brain makes connections in a really wonderful way that very few people really understand today. But connections between things are very important. And to build a thinking tool, you need to be able to very easily build these connections. That's one element that we've been looking at. The other is the aspect of meaning. So it's just a funny cartoon here, but you can see in a very simple way, how I view the world and how I perceive the world can be very different to other people. So my understanding of the word magnificent might mean something very different to you. And how do we get beyond that difference in meaning? How do we come to a common level of understanding? The next topic is similarity. So again, from a human point of view, you straight away look at this picture, you know the green apple tastes a certain way, has a certain texture. The orange tastes a different way, has a different texture. But looking at those, both are practically identical in shape. They have the same uh, extra features, um, and they're both under the fruit classicry, uh, class of, uh, classicry, uh, category. <laughs> I wasn't drinking, honestly. Um, so you can see that from a human uh, point of view, uh, we can tell these things immediately and very young, but how do you get a computer to understand meaning, similarity, and go beyond where they are today? 
And of course, we feel very important in Bell Labs, our approach to augmented intelligence is human interaction. So we feel very strong that the human will always be at the core of anything we do. We want machines and intelligence to be able to enhance our life and be able to give us access to information in a way we never could. But we always want humans to be the decision makers. And that's something that we are pushing quite strongly from a Bell Labs point of view when we address augmented intelligence. So this becomes really important now when you think about the explosion in data, the fact that we're constantly on, online 24-7, 365. And now think about what happens when billions of sensors come online. Think about it in a number of years when you have your smart home or you might have 100 devices in your home that you have to be able to communicate with and control. How will you even manage that? So we have technology today from a communication point of view where I might have 10 or 15 different ways to communicate with people. Think about it, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Office 365, Gmail, and I keep, I could go on instant message. And it's absolutely killing all of us. So it's wasting our time uh, completely. And in Bell Labs, one of the big themes we have is this concept of creating time. And one of the ways we're going to create time is by fusing the digital and the physical and being able to allow you to interact with this vast universe in a very intuitive and seamless way. And what we have done towards that is we've built an augmented intelligence tool that we call internally called Noodle, but it actually is a similarity engine that runs on advanced mathematics that I won't explain here because my nose might bleed in public and that wouldn't be very polite. <laughs> but the key point here is that this tool looks at information theoretic principles. Have I gone down? Yes. 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 I'll shout. So it looks at information theoretic principles to look at the similarity between anything you can imagine in the universe. So it can look at similarity between people, things, objects, data, anything. So it's a very powerful tool that builds similarities. And then through viewing the world in this way, through similarities, we get these interesting connections between things that you never would have realized as a human being. So this is something that we're currently uh, rolling out within Nokia. We hope to bring it to the world uh, beyond that. And um, that's really the end of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what I will say, just finishing since I have the mic, is in terms of EAT experiments in arts and technology, one of the very interesting ways we're using this and we're collaborating with a very high profile artist in this is to explore the ways that humans are limited in how we perceive the world. So, for example, if I enter a room and let's just say there's a 90 year old lady of different ethnic background to me, the way I perceive the world today, I'm going to look at that person and think we probably don't have much in common, right? But what we want to do is use tools like this and use sensor fusion and all this type of information to measure vastly beyond what we can perceive as humans and then present back to people in a compelling way, an easy to understand way that in fact that person said the same words as you said in reaction to the same things. That person moved the same way you did. That person reacted with other people exactly like you did. And in fact, in this invisible way, how we don't perceive the world as humans typically, that person, that 90-year-old lady of different ethnic background to me, is more similar to you than this other white guy in STEM. So these are some of the ways that we're trying to use this in a more kind of a socially aware way, and we're very excited about some of that work as well. Well, thank you. <laughs>